Hey guys, what is up? We are back and we are doing another one of the series where we uh, compare two of my reptiles. I think a good one to do next is bearded dragons and leopard geckos. My leopard gecko is a little newer to me, it's my newest reptile. I took her in as a rescue and she's a little older, so I might not have the most universal opinion on her. Um, but uh, this is my take on it, on bearded dragons versus leopard geckos. Two um, reptiles a lot of people consider when they're looking at their fur. So let's talk about them. I'll talk about personalities and stuff in this more. The last one, the Tegu versus the Aki monitors. I didn't talk uh, personality too much, and I wanna do that a little bit more in this. So that's the first thing we're gonna talk about. So let's get to it. Make sure to check that lower right hand corner and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell so you know when more updates are posted. We're almost at a thousand guys, so I'd really, really appreciate your subscription. Let's go. All right, so first we're gonna talk about personalities. Like I said, we'll talk about my bearded dragon right here, Max. I've had her for about a year and a half. Uh, she's been the hardest reptile I've had to care for. Uh, and that's really interesting because, you know, I have a Tegu, I have a couple Aki monitors, I have a Russian tortoise, Crested Gecko, the whole deal. But she's been really the most, uh, I guess, controversial if you want to say that word. I don't know if that's the right word there. But um, she's given me the hardest time with eating her greens, uh, adjusting humidity levels, such like that. Um, so I've learned a lot about bearded dragons just from that little adventure. Uh, Personality-wise, though, what I would say is that bearded dragons are a very personable reptile. Probably the most personable you would get. Um, and there's other reptiles that are pretty personable, but I would say uh, bearded dragons on that same level. Uh, they are very chill. Um, some of them could get a little feisty, but typically, especially if you get a female, they're pretty chill. Um, and they're very funny. They want to interact with you a decent amount. Um, they'll chill with you. They won't run away. So I think personality-wise, they are a great reptile and a great first reptile. Their husbandry can be a little bit complicated, but anybody who actually does their research um, I definitely could handle one, but personality wise, I really love these guys. They're very funny. Um, their poop smell, that's the worst poop I've ever smelled is a bearded dragon. Uh, I just want to clarify that real quick because that's a big one. A lot of people do not want to deal with the smelly poops, uh, but she is by far the worst pooper out of all my reptiles. Personality wise, I love her though. I would not give her up for anything. And I think she was a good first reptile for me. She was my first. So uh, let's go. Let's talk about the leopard gecko next. All right, guys, here we have Lizzie. She is a rescue leopard gecko that we got quite not too long ago. I will put in the top right in the cards our rescue video. She's pretty old. She's a female. Um, but I love having her and I'm happy we took her in. Anyway, for her personality, I would say, and this might be kind of uh, upsetting to some people, that uh, bearded dragons are a little bit more personable than leopard geckos. Now, I'm not saying leopard geckos aren't personable. Uh, you could definitely handle them and interact with them. They're very calm and relaxed most of the time. Um, but I just see bearded dragons seek out their owners a little bit more and uh, are a little bit more active and want to interact. Uh, I'm not saying all leopard geckos like this are like this, but um, Lizzie tends to hide a lot. She really doesn't come out too often unless it's uh, early in the morning or at dusk, which is pretty typical for a leopard gecko. She is also older, so maybe if she was a little younger, she would be out a little bit more and be a little bit more active. And she is a rescue, so she's been through quite a lot. Uh, so I don't want to speak for all leopard geckos here. Um, one thing I will say that uh, if you get a deep heat projector and put that overhead, right now I have a mat underneath, and that's right over here. If you just want to pan over there a little bit, um, and that's where she goes, and I put a hide over top of it. Usually this is her hide. Um, that's what I usually put over top of it, and that's why she's usually in there all the time because it's warm in there. If you get a deep heat projector and put it over top, uh, it's told or it's at least said that uh, usually they'll come out a little bit more and they'll be in their enclosure more often and not hiding all the time. So that could be one thing that could be a uh, change that might promote her coming out a little bit more. Uh, but I would really say personality-wise, if you're really looking for a reptile that is very personable and more interactive with the owner, I'd go Bearded Dragon. But you really can't go wrong with either personality-wise. All right, so now let's get into the actual husbandry, and we'll start again with enclosure size. You can see my Beardy's enclosure here, and this is pretty large for a Beardy enclosure. You can obviously see that. I think it's six feet long by three feet wide, and it's about three and a half to three feet uh, high. So basically, and it has a couple levels and such, so it's pretty nicely done. I'm pretty proud of it. 
Um, and I do want to switch some of the bottom out to uh, some bioactive substrate, but we'll talk about bioactive stuff later. Basically, I know this is pretty large, and I know this is a large, uh, much larger than what you guys can pretty much do. Um, obviously, if you can do something like this, this is amazing, um, but I'm not going to hold you guys to it because I like to go a little bit extra. Um, what I would say you would want to keep a beardy in is a 4 by 2 by 2 foot enclosure. That seems like a happy medium between a very large enclosure like this and something extra small. The minimum I would say is like a 75 gallon. Uh, give them some space guys. I know they're not the most active of reptiles beardies, but uh, you want to give them enough space that they can go around and do a bunch of stuff. I really think the more space you give a reptile, the more they come to life and you see a lot more interaction and they enjoy it a lot more. So definitely give them most amount of space you can, but I know it's not always the case that you can pull off like a six foot enclosure for a beardy. But that's what I have for enclosure size and that's what I recommend. All right, so this is Lizzie's enclosure. Uh, it is a 40 gallon tank. Uh, a lot of people will keep them in 20 gallons it seems like throughout their life but I like to give a little bit more space, like I said, and I do think it's still a decent amount of people will keep them in 40 gallons, but in terms of enclosure size, beardies are gonna have pretty much a much bigger enclosure and should. Um, there's some people who will put a beardy in like a 50 gallon or something, uh, and I did say that was a bare, bare minimum in my bearded dragon care guide, but I also did say that is really pretty small and I wouldn't recommend it, so I do not think you should put a bearded dragon in something similar to a leopard gecko, I definitely think beardies require much bigger space. So in terms of enclosure size, you should be prepared to give more space to a bearded dragon. Now on to enclosure decor, and that's basically everything inside of the enclosure besides the substrate. Um, both of them are pretty minimal. It's pretty much the essentials. Um, I will kind of mention the stairs in here as that allows for some climbing. Uh, I also have this kind of, I guess, a cement block or something to help with shedding that she could rub against. Uh, she does have a little hammock up there which is pretty nice. She likes to sleep under it and on top of it. Uh, there's a water dish back there, but you don't always need a water bowl for a bearded dragon. They like water that kind of moves and drips on them, and that's how I give her water, and I rarely see her use it. Back there, we have something to read the humidity and temperature, um, and that's on top there. If you just want to show it right there, I think it's an Accurite. Um, and then I just have a bowl for her salad. I will fill that up after the video, um, but that's where her greens go. When it comes to feeding roaches and her diet, um, I just give it to her in her enclosure and she'll eat them pretty quickly. I don't have a separate bowl for them. The only thing else I would like to add in here is like sort of a more official hide for her to go in. Um, but other than that, that's really much the essentials here. It's nothing too complex and too expensive. It's pretty cheap. So you should uh, expect to have a pretty cheap enclosure set up. Now for the decor in my leopard geckos enclosure, pretty minimal as well. We have two hides. We have a warm hide and a cold hide. I want to show the cold hide over there, Olivia. Um, she's in the cold hide right now, I think, currently. But here we have over here, like I said, the warm hide. This is where the mat is underneath of it. Um, and I have that connected to uh, sort of a temperature monitor. You want to come around here and show that real quick. Um, it's not really decor, but I kind of want to include it in that since it's the closest I could kind of fit it into. But that's just to keep it within the right temperature range. And that just goes into the enclosure. You can see the cord there. Um, so you do kind of, if you get a mat, need something to monitor it because they will get up a lot higher than they should. Other than that, we have a water bowl over here. Um, that's what they'll drink out of. And then we have a moist hide, which is right here. And this just has sphagnum moss inside of it, which I spray down about every other day um, just to keep a little wet. And that's to help with sheds. Other than that, you just have paper towels, but we'll talk more about that with substrate. Um, again, pretty minimalistic. Um, nothing too intense uh, and very cheap. So both of them you should expect pretty cheap setups. All right, now on to food items. And we can basically cover both right here. You can see I have two containers here. This is where I gut load their roaches. Right here I have Lizzie's container. She has roaches that are a little bit smaller than what the beardy eats. The beardies uh, gut loaded or whatever gut loading roaches are in here with the Ackies. Uh, they share around the same size. So you're gonna have a little bit smaller roaches if you're going with roaches for leopard geckos and a beardy. Um, but you wanna add uh, more invertebrates than just roaches. You want some diversity. I also have in the corner, we don't have to look at it, but uh, some gut loaded uh, or gut loading crickets waiting and I offer super worms and stuff like that. Uh, but in terms of their main diet, they both eat invertebrates. Just give a diverse amount of different types of invertebrates. Now the only addition here, and if we wanna look at Max real quick, 
uh, Max will have a salad. Now, not all beardies will, you know, eat their salad as well as some other beardies. She is not a big salad eater. Um, they'll eat like kale or eat collard greens, they'll eat endives, you can mix some carrots in there, mix some bell peppers. Um, she'll go from it from time to time, but not as much as a lot of other beauties I've seen. But they do want a salad offered pretty much daily. Um, you can uh, sort of substitute that or help with that if they're not going for their uh, salad by gut loading or feeding your uh, your food items, your invertebrates, with a lot of greens and a lot of fruits and veggies they like. So that kind of is helpful uh, in getting that diet to them. It's not as helpful as directly giving them a salad, so still offer it every day. I am currently going through something with her where I'm trying to reduce her invertebrate diet enough to make her, you know, hungry enough to want to eat the salad more. So I'm kind of going through that a little bit and testing the waters with that. Hopefully I'll have something good to report soon. She's been a lot more um, on top of the salad lately, but not as much as I'd like. But that's the only addition in terms of food items when you're comparing to leopard gecko. I will say say that salad can and I'm saying salad it's really just the greens they eat I just call it salad but uh what they eat the greens they eat can be quite a waste from time to time and a lot of people don't like that um so if you're not really keen on buying salad and or buying greens and them sitting in there and not being eaten a lot then maybe beardy's not right for you but then again greens are really not that expensive like 99 cents for one bunch of something so uh it's up to you but that could be a con for you if you don't want to buy some stuff and then it not get touched but that's the only addition i would say uh it's pretty simple for either though all right, now on to temperatures. So the basking spot for your bearded dragon is probably going to range from 100 to 110, depending on what part they are in their life. Right now, Max likes a nice 100 to 105. That's what she really likes. She doesn't like too much higher, although sometimes it will get a little above 105. Uh, but that's her main basking spot. The gradient is on the low end, and I'm just going to say the low end here is it'll go down to about the, the mid-70s or low 80s, depending on the time of day. And then she also has UVB, which is right over here. Um, they need UVB, you want to give them UVB, uh, that's a, a great addition to give. Uh, if you give them UVB, like I do here, you don't have to put D3 in their calcium, which is great. Um, and uh, this does it for them right here. You only have to change it out once every year. This is the Arcadia. I think it's the 12% bulb, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but this is working fantastic, so I would get a UVB for her or for your beardy. But that's really what you should be expecting in terms of temperature and lighting. Uh, let's talk about the leopard gecko next. Now you can see here, there is nothing on top of this screen. I do not offer any lighting currently for my leopard gecko, and it's pretty debated whether you need to offer UVB or do any overhead lighting. Like I said, you might see your leopard gecko out a lot more if you have a deep heat projector or something in here, um, and it doesn't hurt to get UVB in there. Right now, I'm giving D3 in her calcium, uh, and I'm doing it that way, but I eventually want to switch this over to be bioactive, and then I'm going to have a deep heat projector and some UVB in there and such. So um, it's really debated. It's up to you. Um, either way, you're probably going to match the cost no matter what you do. Uh, maybe it's a little cheaper not to use UVB, but I think it's just a lot safer to do it. Um, and just just go with that. I, I think maybe in terms of lighting and heating, you're going to save a little bit of money getting a leopard gecko. Uh, like I said, right now, heating-wise, she's using uh, under heated mat. Um, and uh, not only do you need that mat, but like I said, you do need the, uh, the control so it doesn't get too hot. So it probably does even out overall in terms of lighting and temperature if you want to include that together um, between a beardy and a leopard gecko, but probably it would be a little bit cheaper for a leopard gecko if you're thinking about saving some money and going with the cheaper option. So um, that's what she's got going on for heat right now, um, and that's pretty much the differences between the two. On to humidity, I'm going to cover it pretty quickly here because it's the same for basically each of these reptiles. They don't like too high of humidity. I like to keep the range within 30 to 50 percent basically. 30 to 40 percent I guess if you're looking specifically at a leopard gecko. And that's kind of what I like to keep it around for my beardy as well, that 30 to 40 percent range. Basically 40 percent is a nice number for me. So for both of them, um, they don't like super low humidity. I obviously don't get it down like 20 percent or less but they don't like high humidity. So keep it in that uh, pretty much average range or lower than average range, 30 to 50% range. That's for both of them. Pretty much the same there, no difference. 
All right, now the last topic, we're gonna be talking about substrate and uh, bioactive stuff. So basically, both of mine right now, both my beardy enclosure and my leopard gecko, are not bioactive and have a non-natural substrate. You can see I have tile here for my beardy. This is pretty great for cleaning and it helps with the heat a little bit. It heats up pretty well um, where the basking spot is. So it's really nice for that, keeping a tidy enclosure and it looks nice. Uh, bearded dragons do like to dig though, so I do plan to convert some of this into a bioactive enclosure. Um, either half or all the bottom here I'll be doing eventually. Uh, and I do recommend going bioactive. If you do it right, there's no concern for impaction and stuff like that. Uh, but I really don't think there's any problems with doing something non-natural like tile. Uh, a lot of people, or not a lot of people, I think it's very few people will have a problem with this. Um, it's really not that big of a deal and I really haven't heard an argument yet that's made me think they definitely need to be on some natural substrate or on some diggable substrate. The only time I really see it essential for there to be some natural substrate for a beardy or something like that or for a leopard gecko uh, is if they're female and if they're gravid because they need to lay. Uh, other than that, I don't really have any a uh, hard argument against why you definitely need to be off a non-natural substrate. And I think it's fine. I don't think there's anything too detrimental. Obviously, if you can let them dig and offer that, that's great and you should promote that behavior. But either way, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But let's go show off my leopard gecko's enclosure one more time and I'll show what she's on. So my leopard gecko is on paper towels right now and that's currently just there until I get it to be a bioactive enclosure, which I'll be doing eventually for her as well. Um, but right now she's on paper towels. That's actually pretty decently common for leopard geckos. And if you're thinking price wise here between the two, obviously tile is much more expensive than putting paper towels down, but there are plenty of other non-natural substrate options to do and you could probably, probably even it out pretty much. You're only going to have to cover more surface area for a bearded dragon, obviously. But in terms of cost, it should be pretty even. But yeah, that's what I have right now. If you can go bioactive, I recommend it. And I recommend you go look up the pros and cons of all types of substrates for uh, leopard geckos and bearded dragons, whether it be natural or non-natural. Uh, and then obviously, if you're doing bioactive and you want to get bugs in there, you're going to have to get some insects to break down the waste and cycle the substrate and stuff. But the costs either way are probably going to be the same in terms of how much uh, of those isopods and whatever you're going to have to get. But yeah, that's what I'm doing for substrate and that's what you should expect. All right guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I tried to cover a little bit more about personality and stuff in this as well. Talked a little bit more about price points and everything to really help you guys see which one you would want to go with if you're debating between a bearded dragon and leopard gecko. I really think what it comes down to is what the type of person you are because there seems like there's people who just really vibe with leopard geckos. There's people who just really vibe with bearded dragons and it's kind of what you're going for. I don't think you could really go wrong with either. Obviously, you really need to research their husbandry and such with any reptile, uh, but they are a great intro reptile if you're getting into them. So definitely, if you enjoyed, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe in the lower right hand corner. Like I said, we're close to a thousand subscribers. It'd mean a lot to me if we could get there pretty soon. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day.